Hi all and welcome to another video for the Utrecht University course Introduction to Bioinformatics. Um, in this video I'm gonna go through the Excel assignment that you can find inside uh, Cupriter notebook, what is it, M07 binning part 1. So there we go. So remember we've made this depth matrix.tab file. Um, it's a big tab delimited matrix or table uh, and in, in here is a lot of essential information for the whole binning process. And since that's so important I figure it's nice to, uh, to visualize that a bit more explicitly and that can be done easily in a program like Excel. So we're gonna follow the steps. We're gonna download the depth matrix .tab file to your computer. So I'm gonna go to files here. I've stored it in the data directory, that matrix.tab. What's the best way? I select it like this and I click download. Download, yep, there it is. So I will just open it. I'm on a Linux system here, so it perhaps looks a bit different than what you're used to. Um, pretty much the same, right? Still very hard to read. I'll close this down again and go back to the instructions. Do, 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 do. Open your data in Excel and make sure all data is displayed as columns. So I'm on Linux, so of course there is no Excel, but I have the open source equivalent and I'm going to open out a file that we just downloaded. Go to Downloads, uh, that matrix. There it is. Open. And in Excel you get a similar um, pop-up kind of thingy. So this is to import text, text import, it says here. And it will give you a preview of how text is imported. And the important thing that we want to have is that data is imported in these different columns like this. So this is a tab delimited file. So this tab check mark has to be checked. If it's not, then this is just one big column. It becomes a mess. Or if there's uh, wrong stuff in there, so let's say it's uh, oh no, commas are not in there, so maybe let's make it a point. It will become even a bigger mess. So we don't want that, we want the tabs. I think it should recognize this by default, it's not that hard. There we go. So this looks a bit more organized already. Um, now we're going to clean this up, we don't need all this data, so there's contact name doesn't tell us much, but there's some information in there. Let's not use it for now. Contact length, I'll just keep that in. Average depth, could be fun. Then there is the depth per sample. So that's this one, this one, this one. And there's the variance. For now, I don't like, I'd rather not have the variance in there. So I'm gonna select all these columns that end in var. Right click, delete columns. Okay, a bit better already. What I'd like to do now is select only those columns where there is the depth information for the different samples. You can do all columns, but I'd like to start here. Just make stuff a bit bigger. There we go. So I do Ctrl Shift, arrow to the right, arrow to the bottom. That's everything. Scroll back up. There we go. And now, so this will be slightly different for each computer. So that must be, I think for me it's on data. Definitely not pivot table. Is it format then? Yeah, format. So you're looking for something in whatever language you're working in, uh, conditional formatting. Condition, color scale. That's what we want. So the minimum is red, then somewhere half is yellow and the maximum is uh, green, I guess that's fine, let's just try and then we get something like this. So now I'm gonna zoom out again. So we get, oops, we get a pattern like this. So what does this mean? So, oh, this is very annoying. So what does this mean? The color indicates the size of the number, so red is small, yellow is kind of medium, and green is very high. 
and each row is a contig, remember? And in the number it represents the abundance of this particular contig in all these six samples. So you can imagine now that, uh, let's see if we can find some similar ones. So these two here are like yellow, yellow, red, yellow, yellow, red. And I have one here that's kind of the same. So yellow, yellow, red, yellow, yellow, red. The green ones are, are all very high numbers. So about 40 in the first two samples and 20 to 30 in the latter three samples. So you could imagine that these and this one and this one, they should all go together. So this is a visualization of what the binning process does for us, at least in part. So remember, binning uses multiple binning signals to determine which context together should constitute a genome. Um, the coverage depth is just one of them. The other important one is sequence composition or KMR profiles, all the same thing. Um, we'll get back to that later. So for now, you completely, you successfully completed this uh, assignment. There it is. So uh, well done. Go on to the next notebook.